is there a supernatural dimension? A world beyond the one we know? Is there life after death? Do angels exist? Can our dreams contain messages from heaven? Can we tap into ancient secrets of the supernatural? Are healing miracles real? Sid Roth has spent over 35 years researching the strange world of the supernatural. Join Sid for this edition of It's Supernatural. Hello, Sid Roth here. Welcome to my world, where it's naturally supernatural. My guest was such a broken, wounded woman. She spent 50 years, 50 years not knowing that God loved her. And most of that time was in church. Then she went to heaven, was hugged by God, sat in God's lap, and found out that she can go to heaven every time she prays, and found out she can teach you how to go to heaven. Anyone interested? Yeah. You know, many of you, as you grew up, uh, you had imperfect parents. You know why they were so imperfect? They had imperfect parents. But it has to stop somewhere. But Judy, uh, you always felt you never measured up. I think it kind of started uh, with the fact that you had a learning disorder. Uh, uh, but in your family, uh, the thing that really, really got you, um, almost sabotaged you from the beginning is you believed a lie. Tell yes. me about that. Well, my mother was painting our living room, and in the kitchen she left a cup down, and it had turpentine in it. And I got up from a nap. How old were you? Oh, about three or four. Mm -hmm. And I drank the turpentine. Whoa. And almost died. They took me to the hospital, pumped my stomach. But after that, my grandmother was taking care of us, and she put me on her lap and she told me your mom left the turpentine on purpose because you're no good why would she say that she wanted my father to take me away from my mother so she so my grandmother could raise me so you had to live with that lie. Yeah. And, uh, and I understand you had so much trauma in your life from the learning disability, the special classes, uh, the fact that you think your mother wanted to kill you, yes. which wasn't true. Uh, uh, but uh, you wrote a letter to Dear Abby, and what, what did you write? I asked her why my dad didn't like me, mm. because he treated me so mean, and it didn't matter what I did. He just didn't like me. And I asked her, why doesn't my father love me? Because I try so hard. And my mother found the letter, and she took it to my dad. I honestly thought he'd say, oh, I do. She just does dumb stuff. But instead, he bellowed out. Maybe I could love her if she wasn't so stupid. Ooh, that and that crushing. was a maybe if she weren't so stupid. So I didn't even have, well, if you're not stupid, I could love her. But maybe if she weren't so stupid, I could love her. So she does what everyone else does. They get married, to, and they think it'll be like Hollywood. <laughs> and one of the first things her husband says to her, look, I only married, I married you so you could cook for me, for me uh, and you could bear my children. <laughs> Just out of curiosity, what effect did that have on you? I gave up. I, I really thought that if I could get married, somebody would love me. But that was kind of, of like the final straw for me, that, well, nobody can love me. And I just thought, with the help of the enemy telling me more lies, 
that I was just a person that couldn't be loved. And there was just something about me that nobody could love me. So I lived like that. Then she had an encounter with what she calls pure love. Tell me about that encounter. Well, we had just gotten back from Toronto, and I had an experience there. And, and by the way, Toronto was having a revival that time. The people that went there were overcome with the Spirit of God and had experiences that were life-changing. So you just came back from this life-changing. Did you have an experience there? Oh, yes. I was worshiping one night. I had my face up, and, um, and I heard a voice say, what are you looking up for? I'm right here. And I looked down, and Jesus was standing in front of me. Mm. And he had his hands out. So I took his hands, and I just kept singing to him. And I put both of his hands in mine, and then just was caressing his. And I felt the nail scars. And as soon as I recognized what it was, he leaned forward and said, You see this? I did this for you. Mm. Personally, he did it for me. You know how we can all think, oh, yeah, he died for everybody? But he personally did it for me, just like he personally does it for everybody. So I had come back to Reading, and Benny called me up to share. And I have always been afraid of people, so afraid because I didn't want them to know I was stupid. So if you don't talk very much, mm. then they can never find out. And so I, she called me up. There's 800 people in the audience. And I was walking up there, and I thought, I'm not scared. I'm not scared at all. And I got up there, and they were setting up, and I'm looking at all the people. And I thought, that is really strange. But that, at that time, I was delivered of my fear of man, of being in front of people, talking to people. So I got done sharing, and I would suppose that it was Bill and Benny praying for me. I don't really remember, but I was down on the floor. And I thought, well, hmm, what do I do now? I'm down here on the floor on the stage, and they're going on with the service. And I'm, I'm thinking, well, do you just sit up? Do you stand up like nothing happened? And then I thought, do you roll off? <laughs> and I thought, oh, would I be a holy roller then? <laughs> so I thought, oh, I'll just sit up. But I couldn't get up. And then at the end, I was just relaxed, and I happened to open my eyes, and I saw his glory. I don't know how I knew what it was. But I knew it was his glory, and it was the most beautiful thing I've ever seen in my life. And I kept saying, look, look at it. It's so beautiful. You know, we read about his glory in the Bible, but it's one thing to read about it. The other, I think what you're saying is it's an experience. Yes. God doesn't want you just to read the Word. He wants you to experience the Word. Every time we experience the Word, we have more faith. It adds faith to our lives. So he was holding something in his hand. What? Mm -hmm. A rock. And he was knocking on it. And it started cracking like an egg. And it all fell off. And inside the rock was a heart. And it started very slowly beating again. And he said, this is my church. And this is what I'm going to do to my church. I'm going to take the rock from off its heart, and it's going to come alive again. Now, you had this encounter you told me about with the glory of God, mm -hmm. with the love of God. You became almost a changed person. One day, you're laying across your bed, and you see a door. Take it from there. Well, I see this door, and it opens about a foot. And something comes out, and it lays on me. And I stopped praying and started worshiping God. But I'm thinking, this is so strange. I feel 
so good and I'm worshiping God in a way that I have never talked to him before. You know? So you, you had a degree of a breakthrough and this door keeps showing up and one day the door opens and what happens? I moved into this place. I saw two figures. They were shadowy figures. Um, one I knew was the Father and one was Jesus. And I just talked to them. We talked. I thought I was making it up. I thought somehow in my imagination I was making it up. But I, in order to imagine anything, you kind of have to think of it first and then you run with it mm -hmm. and put things in. And of course. I wasn't imagining because this all surprised me. And every time I'd lay down and start to pray, that's where I would be with them and I'd talk to them. Tell me about the time that Jesus hugged you. Oh, when I see him a lot, he, he hugs you. And he, I can feel his arms around me. I haven't had this. You're provoking me to jealousy. You know, you're doing what the Bible says. The Bible says the Gentile is to provoke the Jew to jealousy. Okay, <laughs> so you're normal. But tell me, I, it's, I'll kind of get a little of it just from you telling me, what is it like? for God to hug you? What is it like to feel his love? It's the best. It took me a while to learn, uh, quite a while to learn, that when I go to him and I can sit on his lap anytime I want to, and I just take in all of this, and then when it's over, I'm back, and it's like I'm full of peace. I have to tell you, as you're telling me what occurred, and occurs quite often, I'm feeling that peace come off of you into me. You know what I believe? I believe that in just a little bit, I'm going to have you pray for everyone that wants this prayer uh, in our studio audience and watching. And I believe that something tangible is going to yes. happen to them. In fact, when we come back, I'll have her pray for you. We'll be right back to It's Supernatural. Many viewers report testimonies of miracles, signs and wonders, and healings as a result of watching It's Supernatural. While watching your TV program with Peter Gammon, when you said pain be gone, I felt my back pop. I have not had any problems in my lower back since then. This is the first time I have ever received a miracle without anyone laying hands on me. This has strengthened my faith so much in the supernatural working of God. While watching your TV program, I said a prayer along with Tony Kemp, and a miracle occurred. I have struggled with alcohol and lust all my life. Suddenly I felt a lifting of weight off my shoulders and the curse of alcohol and lust was lifted along with my guilt of sin. I felt lighter and free for once in my life. I haven't had any urges to drink and have no withdrawal symptoms. Thank you, Lord. If you've been touched through watching It's Supernatural, share your testimony at sidroth.org forward slash praise. Our world is rife with comparisons about what separates us. Day after day, we go about our lives with tunnel vision, but Scripture tells us how Messiah broke down the wall between Jew and Gentile, allowing for the creation of one new man, one new humanity. This spiritual completeness is set to usher in the greatest move toward God the world has ever known. Sid Roth has discovered Scripture's key to reaching the Jewish people with God's love. One new humanity opens the door for God to move in signs and wonders, and all will see the evidence of the invisible God promised in Scripture. At SidRoth.org, you'll find mentoring tools to empower you to share how one new humanity is critical to bringing multitudes to know God. You'll understand Israel and the Jewish roots of the church and how all the nations of the earth will experience blessings unseen in human history. Log on to SidRoth.org today and learn how one new man is the key to unlocking God's greatest blessings. 
Many viewers report testimonies of miracles, signs and wonders, and healings as a result of watching It's Supernatural. I grew up in an impoverished and abusive home with drugs and alcohol present. But God used your TV program to wash away the pain of my past and give me new hope for my future. I am now free and walking in the supernatural of God every day. If you've been touched through watching It's Supernatural, share your testimony at SidRoth.org forward slash praise. We now return to It's Supernatural. Well, Judy, you went to a meeting with someone that's been a frequent guest on It's Supernatural, Randy Clark. You went somewhere. Tell yes. me what happened. Well, I could feel the Lord's presence very strongly, and I thought, well, the best thing for me to do is lay down somewhere. So I laid down, and Jesus came and said, would you like to go somewhere? I said, oh, well, yes. And off we went, and we came to this place and stood there, and a portal opened up. A, and behind this portal was a beautiful garden. Just, it was just beautiful, and it was a big portal. And I started at this side, and I was just looking at everything as I went by. And when I got to that side, I saw my dad. Nobody could have ever told me. The one me. that told you you were stupid, the one yes. that rejected you. Yes. Nobody could have told me he was in heaven. I wouldn't have believed them. And there he was. And my first reaction was, oh, you're here. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> And he said, yes, I just made yes, it. I well, made he it. knew about the Lord, so, and he knew he was dying. So any time he could have accepted Jesus, and obviously he did. So, so Judy, you saw your, your dad, and you're surprised he's there. Yes. What happened next? I don't know why, but I started to turn around, and he called my name. Judy. And he said, I am so sorry. I think you're beautiful. I love you very much. I am so proud of you. And then the portal closed. Had he ever said that to you in Never. your life? Never. Hmm. Okay, the portal closes, then what? I looked over at Jesus, and my grandmother was standing beside him. Now, I knew she was saved. I knew she hmm. lived out her life, the rest of her life, for the Lord. And she came over to me, and, and she just said, I'm so sorry. And then it was over. And I, I, I thought, what a loving God. He could have waited until I died and saw my dad and my grandmother. But he wanted, he wants me, he wants everyone so whole and healed from the inside out that he gave me that experience before I even died to know that my dad loves me. Now I know he's in heaven. I know my grandmother's in heaven. I can't wait, in a sense, to see him and talk to him. Well, Judy, you say everyone can go to heaven, and you speak on this all over, and people have these heavenly experiences. Uh, tell me a few. Well, there was a boy, nine years old, his name was Miles, and I went and did a session on a Saturday night at his church, and they all had really nice little trips. And the next morning, he went to Sunday school, and he asked his teacher, can we go back to heaven? So she had all the kids lay down and led them the same way I did, and he went to heaven, and Jesus brought him a piece of pizza. And because he was so allergic to dairy, if he put milk on his skin, the skin would peel off. So allergic to fruit, anything acidic at all, he just absolutely could not eat. His mother took an epinephrine pen everywhere they went. He's been air flighted out of his city to a bigger city for hospital visits. Um, and he, so he told Jesus, I can't eat that. You know I'm allergic. And he said, if you eat this, I'll heal you. So he ate it in this heavenly experience. He goes home and he tells his mom what happened. She goes and gets a bowl of pineapple sherbet, 
I don't know if I'd be brave enough to do it. I mean, he could die. He could. You know, because he's allergic, he told me, to the, the dairy and the pineapple. Yes, both. And she's a woman of great faith. But she did have her pin ready, that epinephrine pin ready. And he ate the whole bowl. He was totally healed. Oh, I can't believe this. Totally Thank healed. Thank you, Lord. And then I got an email from the pastor about three months later. And the mother didn't tell anybody, but the child also had diabetes. And the mother said, if, he, if Jesus healed him of that allergy, I know he healed him of the diabetes also. So she weaned him off the insulin, took him back for the checkup, and the doctor says, I, I don't understand this, but he doesn't have diabetes anymore. You know, your faith level just soars when you have an experiential knowledge of God. In every area, your faith at level source. <laughs> but tell me about the person who asked you to bring a note to heaven. Yes. Our senior associate, Chris Ballatin, um, it was getting around that I was having these trips and all. So he brought a I napkin to me where he'd written a note to God. Me. It said, Dear God, this is your son, Chris Ballatin. I need some money. Love he really Chris. had faith there for you to take it to heaven. <laughs> I don't know if he was teasing me or what, but I'm going, oh, Chris. <laughs> and um, so that night, I'm, I'm just with the father, and the father said, where's the note? And I went, and it was in my hand. But you can't bring anything to heaven. You can't. So how was it in your hand? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I know you don't know. <laughs> so I went, and gave it to him. And he started reading it, and he threw back his head and started laughing. And he says, I love Chris so much. He makes me laugh. Hmm. And I thought, do you realize when we do funny things, he laughs? That just so tickles me that he can do that. And um, so after it was over, he didn't say anything except that. But the next week, during the next week, somebody gave Chris $1,000. I do not take notes. Do not send me your notes. I was just going to say, any of you want to uh, give her a note to take <laughs> to heaven? Oh, I see some hands going up. <laughs> How about you? I believe that there's going to be great miracles that are going to happen as you pray for people to be free of lies and to experience experience this heavenly visitation. And it is for everyone, you're sure? Yes, everyone. Father, I pray right now that everybody out there that's listening to this... Can I get in on this? Oh, yes. Okay. Everybody out there and in here would have a real experience with you that would experience your love that is they're sitting there right now, including that lady that's sitting on her couch in her living room watching this, that's at the very end of her rope. She reminds me of the cat that's hanging on, that God is going to touch you right now, all of you, with his peace and with his love. And he's going to give you an invitation. Come up here just like he did John the Revelator. He's, he's winking his finger at you, saying, come up here, because I want to love you. More than anything, I want to love you. I want you to know my love. I want you to be healed on the inside from all the lies that the enemy has told you that are not true. Even if you have what you think is evidence that it is true, it's a lie. You are totally, completely loved by God. And right now, I just release this on all of you. Amen. This is the beginning of the rest of your life walking in love. Many viewers report testimonies of miracles, signs and wonders, and healings as a result of watching It's Supernatural. My husband has never spoken in tongues, and I thought that the personal trainer kit would help us both. 
So I asked my husband if it would be okay to watch the DVD while we ate a late dinner. My husband said okay. Our 14-year-old son had been disrespectful, resentful, and unforgiving lately. He was in his room working on schoolwork while my husband and I watched the DVD. Then my husband and I began speaking in tongues. When my son heard us, he initially thought it was stupid and gibberish. Then he heard me laughing and he thought, I need this and I'm going to receive it. So just before bed, he apologized for his behavior and now he too is watching the DVD. Blessed be the name of God. If you've been touched through watching It's Supernatural, share your testimony at sidroth.org forward slash praise. Next week on It's Supernatural. I have three people that operate in the gift of miracles and any one by themselves would have been enough. But when you put these three together, one could put a thousand to flee, but two can put 10,000 to flee. What can three people that operate in miracles? Here's what I know. We're going to have more miracles than we've ever had in the history of our ministry.